the Federal Reserve finally admits the truth in a new shocking report that just came out. I'm going to explain this to you in one simple, fast step. Step number one, let's go over this bombshell chart that was revealed in this report that, quite frankly, I still can't believe was released to the public. This chart goes all the way back to 1979 to today's date. And this is going to be the key right here, October 2022. More on that in just a moment. On the left, we go from zero up to 50. Now, what does this number represent? This is actually the number of states that fall into a specific category. You see, this chart is very clever. When we think about a recession in the United States, we think about it as though the entire United States is in a recession or the entire United States is not in a recession. And what this report shows is that it's actually far more nuanced when you look at it on a state by state level. To dive into the details, editor, let's cut right to the internet. This report is on the St. Louis Fed's website. Title, Are State Economic Conditions a Harbinger of a National Recession? They start by saying economists view recessions as national events. However, past recessions have shown that some states' economies continued to expand during a recession. And I think this is why they wrote the paper to try to calm people down that, oh yeah, don't mind that yield curve. Sure, we might be going into a significant recession, but it doesn't necessarily mean that each state's economy will suffer. But what they inadvertently did is kind of leaked the truth <laughs> to the public that we're most likely already in a recession. And you'll see what I mean when we get into the last paragraph. But basically what they do is track how well or poorly each state's economy is performing based on a metric they call SCI. And I'll explain exactly what that means when we go back to the whiteboard. So what they do in this report is they go back and look at the past six recessions and they see how many states had basically negative GDP based on that SCI metric at the start of this recession when hindsight is 2020. And what they found is February 1980, there were 30 states that would fall into this category. August 81, 30. August 1990, 26. April 2001, 24. January 2008, only nine states. So why was there such an extreme outlier? It's because when they were tracking the GDP at the beginning of 2008, all of their numbers were completely off. So after the fact, when they went and revised the GDP numbers, they revised them from literally a positive 3.7 down to a decline of 1.6. So even at a state-by-state -state level, they thought everything was rosy, nothing to see here. But then after Lehman Brothers collapses, everything comes crashing down with it. And then looking back in retrospect, they're like, oh, yeah, uh, we thought the states were doing well. We thought only nine states were in a recession. But it turns out a lot more of them were. And by October 2008, 47 states were in serious, serious economic trouble. As a result of this obvious error where they were kind of like, oh, whoops, my bad. Sorry about that. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Let's go ahead and sweep that one under the rug. They omit <laughs> January 2008 from their report. And then they look at March 2020, where 35 states were in this negative category based on the SCI index they have. And the conclusion they come to is that on average, going into a recession, there will be at least 26 states that will be showing these negative numbers. So this leads them to ask the obvious question, is the U.S. tipping into a recession right now? 
In sum, a threshold estimate based on this analysis shows that 26 states need to have negative growth in the SDI, as we just said, to have reasonable confidence that the national economy entered into a recession. Let me repeat, to have reasonable confidence that the national economy has already entered into a recession. So where are we now? In October of 2022, and I'd like to remind you, now we're in January of 2023, where the numbers are most likely worse, 27 states had negative growth that would exceed the six recession average of 26 states. So whenever you hear Jerome Powell or Janet Yellen or any of the talking heads on CNBC or any of the Fed officials that are interviewed, they're always coming out and trying to paint a rosy picture of the economy. Saying, oh, well, look at the low unemployment rate as an example. But now what they're doing in this little report that comes out subtly on the St. Louis Fed's website is they're saying, oh, yeah, by the way, based on these other data, it seems like we're most likely already in an economic recession. So this is why I say, finally, they have admitted what seems to be the truth. Now, let's go over this chart so you can get a visual as to exactly what that report was talking about. So again, we go back to 1979, and this represents all 50 states on the left. So in 79, we're going into, let's say, 80, 81, when Volcker jacked interest rates almost up to 20%. As most of you know, we went into a recession. So this red dotted line indicates that 26 state threshold they were talking about in the report. So here, going into this recession, we see, or during the recession, we see we got all the way up to 50 states. So all 50 states are very close to it. We're in the negative as far as that SCI report. And then in 82, we'll call it, we got it to maybe 47 states. And in the recession of the early 1990s, again, we went over this 26 state threshold, maybe up to call it 37. And you can see every single recession that we have been in since 1979 has gotten over that red dotted line. So where are we today? Well, at least as of October 20. 22, we were at 27. And remember, this report came out at the end of December. So I would assume that if they had the real-time data, that this 27 would probably be closer to 30 or maybe even 35. And this is really the key. So how do they come up with this mysterious number that we've been talking about? Well, a few different components here. First is the state's non-farm payroll. Second, average hours worked in the manufacturing sector. Third, the unemployment rate. Fourth, wages and salary distribution adjusted for the state's local rate of inflation. Very interesting. But the main takeaway, the bottom line here, is really what this metric represents is negative real GDP at a state level, not just a national level. And the truth, the Fed most likely inadvertently (laughs) admitted in this new report is that the economy isn't as rosy as they would like you to believe. In fact, there's a very high probability that we are already in a recession. For more content that will help you build wealth and thrive in a world of -of out-of-control central banks and big governments, check out this playlist right here, and I will see you on the next video.